Hi, this is Sudeep and I welcome you back to this wonderful journey of learning structure analysis with Start Pro. In the last 10 sessions, we had devoted a lot of time to understand the concept of the sectional properties, the cross-sectional areas and the moment of inertias. We have understood these concepts in detail. In addition, we had also learned about the product of inertia and also about the principal axis of inertia and what they mean. Now, you might have found it to be boring if you had already understood these concepts very well, but this series is an attempt to include everyone who struggles with the concept of structural engineering. So we had devoted 10 sessions uh, in, order, in order to clarify the fundamental concepts. So starting this session, we are getting back into Start Pro, and uh, we will start discussing about how to define the material and the sectional properties in Stat Pro. So in this context, we will start by understanding about the local access system of Stat Pro from this session. But before we do that, please do take a moment to hit the subscribe button if you are new to this channel. And for those who are an existing subscriber of this channel, if you are getting value out of this channel, please do hit the like button. So every member have their own local access system. Understanding the local access system of members is important from the perspective of modeling the geometry properties uh, and the loads and also interpreting the analysis and design results. Though this series is specifically meant for 2D structures, we will cover this topic for any general member in space so that we can refer back to these concepts when we deal with 3D structures. So let us see how the local access system of a member is defined. So if you have two nodes numbered one and two and a member connects from node one to node two like this, that is node one is the start node and node two is the end node, then the local X axis would be pointing from the start node to the end node. To know more about the concept of the start node and the end node, you can refer to the video that can be accessed by clicking the link that is appearing on the top right corner of your screen right now. Now imagine that you are looking at the local X axis from the positive direction of the axis like this. Thus, you will not be able to see the local X axis as it would be coming out of the page towards you like this. So, you will be able to see the local Y and the local Z axis like this. Now, I have purposely aligned the local Y and local Z axis along the vertical and the horizontal directions. And I call the vertical direction as the zero degree line for local Y and the horizontal line as the zero degree line for local Z axis. So in short, we are saying that local Y and local Z are at zero degrees at this point. However, it is not necessary that we will always see the local Y and local Z along the vertical and horizontal directions or uh, at their zero degree positions. But why? To understand this, let us go back to the right and thumb rule that we had discussed at the inception of the series. You can quickly access that session by clicking on the link that is appearing on the screen right now. However, let us quickly rediscuss the concept once again. The first thing that we would need to understand is that the local X, local Y and local Z are mutually perpendicular to each other like this. Thus, the angle between all these lines are 90 degrees. Now, if we know the direction of two axes, we can locate the direction of the third axis using the right hand thumb rule or the cross product of the vectors. Now, note that when I mention the direction of an axis, I mean the positive direction of the axis. Now, unless I mention otherwise, please take this to be true. We can understand this concept of how to locate a third vector from the known position of the two vectors using a simple illustration. Now, the cross product of local x vector to local y vector will give 
the local z vector. Thus, if this be the local axis system, where the blue vector represents the local x axis, the red vector represents the local y axis, and the green vector represents the local z axis, and if we curl all the fingers of our right hand from local x to local y axis, then the thumb would point towards the local z direction. Again, the cross product of local y to local z vector will give the local x vector. Thus, if we curl the fingers of our right hand from local y to local z axis like this, the thumb would point towards the local x axis. And finally, the cross product from local z to local x will give the local y. Thus, if we curl the fingers of our right hand from local z to local x axis like this, the thumb would point towards the direction of the local y axis. So again, if we look at the local axis system from the positive direction of the local x axis, the local y along its zero degree line or the vertical line and the local z along its zero degree line or the horizontal line satisfies the condition of being mutually perpendicular to each other and also satisfies the right hand thumb rule. But then even this configuration satisfies the right hand thumb rule and of being mutually perpendicular to each other. You can clearly see that now the axis system is inclined at a non-zero angle from its zero degree line. And even this configuration is equally valid and this. So all of these configurations with an inclination from zero degree to 360 degrees from the zero degree line satisfies the condition of being mutually perpendicular to each other and also satisfies the right hand thumb rule. So then when we define a member in STAT Pro, we definitely know the direction of the local x axis being defined from the start node to the end node of the member. However, we are confused about the local y and the local z axis as there can be so many possible configurations for a defined direction of the local x axis. So this default configuration of the local axis system as a whole is called the beta zero configuration in Start Pro, and we intend to discuss this in more details in the next couple of episodes. Now let us see how we can display the local axis orientation of members within Start Pro. So we go back to the model that we had created in a couple of our last sessions, the model of the goalpost frame. To display the local axis orientation of the members in the model, we right click, go to labels, and check in the checkbox besides beam orientation. So we do that and also note that the hotkey for the beam orientation is the letter O. Now you might remember that we had discussed about the hotkeys in connection to displaying the node numbers and member numbers in one of our last session. In case you do not remember that, you can access that session by clicking on the link that is appearing on the screen above. A hotkey is something which you press along with the shift key to achieve the same task quickly as a shortcut instead of going to the labels option and clicking on the required checkbox. Now let us click on apply and OK. Now we can see that the local access system is displayed for each individual members. The local X axis is displayed in blue and is defined from the start node to the end node. Now let us switch on the beam numbers by pressing shift plus B and also switch on the node numbers by pressing shift plus N. And now we can see that beam number one, if we go to the member incidences box here, we can see that beam one is created between node one and node two and thus the local x-axis, which is displayed in blue color, is pointing from node one to node two. For member number two, we can see that it is created from the node two as the start node to node three, which is the end node, and thus 
the local x-axis is pointing from node 2 to node 3. And finally, for member 3, we find that it is created from node 3 to node 4, and thus the local x-axis is pointing towards node 4 from node 3. The local y-axis is displayed in red, and the local z-axis is displayed in green. And yes, just to re restate, each member would have its own local access system. Now, if you click on Shift plus O, the member local access system would disappear like this. And if you press on Shift plus O again, the member orientation would reappear. Thus, this is a toggle option. Again, it would be important to understand that the local access configuration of the members from the perspective of modeling and interpreting the analysis results. Now, you might wonder why I have not spoken about the orientation of local Y and local Z, though I had very exclusively explained uh, the orientation of the local X axis. Well, this is a far more complicated subject that is the orientation of local Y and local Z. And this is something that we intend to cover in the next two episodes. So in a new start profile, let us quickly create two nodes. Let us let the coordinates of the first node be uh, 0, 0, 0, and the coordinate of the second node be 5, 0, 0. Now let us create a beam using the Add Beam option. Now, as soon as I click on Add Beam, you can see that uh, the cursor has changed, and I can use this to create a beam directly from node 1 to node 2. So I can click on node 1 and click on node 2, and we have a beam being created. Now, <clears throat> if I switch on the member orientation or the local axis orientation of this member using Shift plus O, we can see that, as expected, the local x-axis is pointing from node 1 to node 2 because the start node of this beam is node number 1 and the end node of this beam is node number 2. Now, if we actually change uh, the, the, the start node and the end node for this beam, so uh, instead of this being node 1 being the start node, let us go and define node 1 as the end node and node 2 as the start node. And we will see that the local axis, x axis has reversed. So instead of node 1 to node 2, it is now pointing from node 2 to node 1. So yes, even for the same beam, which is same geometrically, but if the start and the end nodes are different, then the local x axis would be different. And along with that, the local y and local z axis would also be different. Now, with this change, would also change the member results. So if you get a set of member results for one local axis orientation, the member results would change completely for the other local uh, axis orientation. And the results would be consistent with the the orientation of the local access system of the member. I hope you have understood the concept of local access configuration in StatPro by now. In the next few sessions, we will discuss about the beta zero configuration of the local access system or the default position of the local Y and local Z axis against a set direction of the local X axis. Now, if you have found this video to be useful, please do hit the like button so that this content reaches out to many more who are searching for a similar content. So see you in the next one. Till then, bye.